Hello everyone, welcome back to a new video on this channel. In one of my last videos I got into Flexbox and explained the basics on how Flexbox works, how you style or how you control the container and uh, which properties you can assign to the children living inside a Flex container. Now in this video we're going to use this knowledge and create a custom grid based on Flexbox. And you might know such grids and yeah, it's nice to know, but in the end um, you, you'll still use Bootstrap. Well, with this grid, I'm pretty sure if you really look at it, you will see it has a lot of stuff you'll probably need and it might be worth considering using such a custom written and, and therefore customized grid instead of the big Bootstrap thing which comes with all sorts of stuff you're never using and which just slows down um, the, your, your website access. So, if you haven't heard about Flexbox or you don't know what it is at all, you can't, you're not really sure how to use it, I definitely recommend you to check out my videos I did on this and then let's go into it. So, I'm sitting here with my Blanker workspace open up and it's a Completely new, fresh workspace. I didn't change anything as of now. First thing I'm going to do is get rid of this hello plunker message here. And we'll start this grid by, yeah, well, obviously the, the two components which are most important to it. The, the rows of our grid and the columns. And I will create a simple four column grid here. Because in my personal experience, four columns is what I use most. I, I never needed like six columns next to each other really. But if you were to need something like this, this video will really get you going on how to create something like this easily on your own. So let's first head over to style.css and start right, uh, right away with our row class. So I'm just going to create a new CSS class here and it will be our flex container holding our columns which will be the children of our flex box. Um, therefore we have to well uh, declare it as display flex. I'll also give it a width of 100% so that our rows by default span the entire width of our window. Now obviously you can change that for your grid if you want. Um, but I think the row being the whole width is a pretty good thing. I, for, for when it comes to me, I prefer working with paddings and margins on my columns instead of the row. Because there are times where in my grid a row might have a background image which should really span across the whole page and not have any ugly white spaces on the left and right due to some margins. And that's why I keep my rows 100% and control the, the actual alignment and the, and the spacement of my content with the, row, with the columns within my rows. So that's that. And I'm also going to um, enter my first flex property, which is justify content. And I want by default to be all the items in such a row, all the columns to be pushed up to the beginning of the row to the start, flex like start therefore. Now I think the problem now is we, we can't really see what we're doing. So I'm going to change this by adding a helper class here, row.mark, which will basically just make it visible to us by adding a one pixel dashed border around it with a light gray. And I will even more add to it by making it uh, easier to, to recognize when you hover over it um, by changing the border to uh, dashed and uh, give it a light blue and the content, <coughs> excuse me, the content should then have a background color of, yeah, also a light blue I looked up. Okay, so that's that. And these two, I'll, uh, let me just comment that, are really only helper classes, not you, necessary for your grid. Helper classes. 
Now, even though I just said I don't like margins on my rows, I want to give the grid the flexibility to easily add some predefined margins. So I'm gonna create a help or a class for this row, a subclass, or an additional class, um, with a top and bottom margin property of 16 pixels. And uh, let me just do it this way, bottom 60 pixels. I was considering writing it in one statement by just writing um, margin 16 pixels zero, which would do this exact same as these two lines do. Um, but I don't want to do this because I want to give the user the possibility to use this class as well as the left right class, which I'm defining here. And these two classes would each other overwrite each other if I would use the combined margin um, command property. So margin left, let's give this 32 pixels as well as for margin nah, come on, right 32 pixels. And then we have to adjust the width of our row because we added margins, it's no longer 100%. And I'm gonna use this useful and handy calc function of CSS to say, okay, take the 100% and now just subtract the two margins, left and right, adding up to 64 pixels. Okay, so that's our row. Okay, so it's, that's it for our rows as of now. Now let's get into our columns, our column class. So columns and this one is the row section. So I got my dot col class here and this one will basically have some properties which all of my sub classes, uh, cul classes should inherit because for columns, I'll have more than one class. So I'll leave this empty as of now, because I'm going to have a call one of two class, for example, right? Now, I said I'm going to use four columns while I'm writing one of two here. Um, really, that's just to add some flexibility. Obviously, I could do the same with a two of four class, but I want, if someone uses this grid, to really give him the possibility to intuitively use it. And I think it's it's more intuitive to say, okay, I, in this case, I will have two columns and therefore I write one of two instead of two of four when I'm only using two columns overall. That's the only reason. And this class will be the exact same as the two of four class, right? Okay. so. What does this class hold? All it has is a width of 50%, right? Because we say it's one of two or two of four, and that is 50%. Now let's write some HTML so that we can actually, actually see our work, right? So I'm gonna declare a row here, div class row, add a call one of two, as well as a call two of four. Enter some content here. And we can see, okay, it seems to be divided up. Now, one thing is we don't see our border. That is because I didn't add the mark property class here, sorry. Now we can see, okay, this is our row. And now let's do, uh, let's do an equal things for our columns, right? So here, down here, I'm going to um, add uh, call dot mark <coughs> class, which will he have a dotted border, which is red and a background color of, I also looked this up, FC 
df d4 should also be a light red and I'll make that hoverable or change on hover as well then the border will be um, oh, let's let's make that dashed just to have it uh, all on the same line so I'm gonna give this the same light blue and the uh, no, not the same because I want to, to, to have a difference. I want to be able to see what is a column and what is a row, so therefore we'll give it another color. Okay, save it. And now we also need to add the mark class here and here. Oh. Now I was just wondering why uh, the, the marking <laughs> doesn't show up and this is because See here, mark is added to the call class. Now here, I only got to call one of two class, so I need the call base class added here. And now we can see, okay, we got it here. Now, okay, that is, okay, we, we got a 50% two columns, but maybe we would like some gathers, right? In, in most grids you get some, gutters to separate the columns. So yeah, let's add a um, with gutters class here. And what it does is it adds a margin to the left and right um, when, and it, it really belongs to the rows, sorry, not to the columns, because the with gutters is a, a class we will add to our row because we want to have gutters here with gutters. And um, obviously it should affect our calls and not our row. So nice. We now got our grid with our gutters in between. And as you can see, we got also the space on the left and right. Now this is obviously the case because we set a margin of 16 pixels to left and right for both columns. And that obviously affects both sides. So therefore, I need to write some additional code to say, okay, the first of type, so the first column we encounter in a row should have a margin left oops, of zero. And the uh, last of type should have a margin right of zero. So now we only got a gutter in the middle of 32 pixels in this case. Now we get this one and two pushed or aligned directly to the left edge of our container. Maybe we would like to have some padding in our column as well. So let's go, go down to our columns here and give the opportunity of adding a class padding to our column, which would basically just add a default padding of 16 pixels. And if we now go to our HTML file and say, yeah, we want to have a padding here, we got it. Now for both containers. Now another thing is we're using Flexbox, right? So we don't have to use the standard of having our columns distributed this way, right? We, we, this is basically flex start property. So both columns are pushed to the left and this is only not directly visible because as each column has 50%, it fills the complete row, right? But if these columns were smaller, we would see them pushed to the left and actually Let's just show this by adding additional call classes here. So we got one of two, we got two of four. Now I also want to give the possibility to say one of three, which will have a width of 33.3%. And I'll just add two of three. 
which has obviously 66.6% width. And let me just finish it up by saying, okay, we also got one of four, which has a width of 25%. And we got two of, uh, excuse me, three of four, which will have a width of 75%. Now, if we change this to one of three, for example, then we can see, okay, we again got some space on the right, even though we removed the right margin. This is because we got flex start set for our justify content property of our row, the container, the flex container. And this says, okay, add the first element of the flex container to the beginning of our holding container, the, the row, and the second directly next to it, and so on. And if there is space left, well, the space will be on the left. And the opposite would be flex end, where these two items would sit all the way over here to the right, and we would have some empty space here. Now, sometimes we may want this behavior, sometimes we may not. So, I think the user should have the possibility to choose what he wants. And therefore, I'm going to add some additional classes here. First one will be space between. And this will all be row, dot row, space between. We'll have a justify content property of space between. How surprising. Row space around will have uh, justify content property of space around, as you might have guessed. And we'll also have a row.center property, which will have a justify content property of center. And I will also give the possibility of using flex and content flex and to have the effect I just described that everything sits on the end of the row. Now, that's the, the horizontal positioning options I wanna offer here. And we can use them by saying, okay, I want some space between here. And now we can see that the space on the right is gone, but the gutter got a little bit broader and this is because we said okay the space should be between the two elements. If we were to use around we will see that we got a tiny empty space here, here and you might not directly see it but the gutter also got broader. If we use center we got a little bit of bigger space on the left and right because we only got our margin gather here, but know that the empty space is only divided between the left and right here, because the rest is centered. Okay, so I'll leave it at center as of now. Now we've already gotten pretty far here in this video and the basics of our grid are now set up. We're almost ready to use it, but we got some fine tuning left to do and then also then want to show you how, how flexible it is, yeah? how really flexible this tiny little grid here can be. And I will do this in the next video. So I hope I see you there. Have a nice day. Bye.